Hey, what's up, guys? This is Grant. This is Sash. And this is Indy B N to the B. Today, we talk with Michael Desmond of the band Local Nomad uh, out of Charleston, South Carolina, by way of Long Island, New York. Uh, really cool guy. I got some great tunes. And uh, you're going to enjoy this one. Yeah, a lot of great stories came out of this one. Uh, so really excited for you guys to hear it. Roll the motherfucking tape. All right, welcome back to another episode of Indie B&B. We are joined today by Mr. Michael Desmond of Local Nomad. How's it going today? Good, man. How you doing? We are good. We're so glad to have you on. Um, you know, we, we kind of found out about you through, uh, through Babe Club and some of the other Charleston music scene uh, guys. Um, but we've uh, recently become fans of yours and uh, excited to talk to you Ooh. about your music. Well, thanks for having me, man. Appreciate it. Of course. So, um, you know, I always do a little research, uh, you know, see what I can find out. And um, you've actually got one of the best websites I've seen out of any of the artists we've had. It's so cool. How did you how did you get that website so cool? Uh, <laughs> well, I can tell you this. I can tell you my secret. Uh, I didn't do it. It was my manager and uh, he killed it. Hell yeah. yeah. It's cool how like you got like the sort of video thing kind of moving around but um you know I, I read your your kind of your bio and uh i've got a little bit of information about how local nomad got started but kind of give a you know quick rundown to our listeners about how this all got started well um i've been playing in bands for like 12 to 15 years now and uh this is like the second thing that i've done on my own um and the real reason why i i was going by des which uh, everyone in New York, I just moved to Charleston like a month ago. Everyone in New York calls me Des. Cause my last name is Desmond. And uh, this kid that I grew up with he actually blew up. His name is Des Rocks and he stole my name. Uh, and he friggin' blew up. And uh, so I like didn't have to change my name, but I was just like, it would probably be a good idea to change it because it's very similar. So that's the real story behind the name. But I, it, what it means to me is, uh, I mean, I spent the last eight years of my life playing music full time, gigging, and I was always on the move, going to new places. Um, and that's kind of where it came from. Um, and one of my buddies from New Jersey, uh, he he was like, why don't you call yourself local foreigner? And uh, I was like, probably not good timing for me to call myself that in the world in general. Yeah. So, um, you know, so I, uh, my friend's sister was like, you know, what about local nomad? And I was like, yeah, that's perfect. It's, it's awesome. It's easy to search. Um, and I was like, that's it. Cause finding a band name is so damn difficult now because I spoke about this many times on like other podcasts and stuff, but you got people spelling their names wrong on purpose or like doing some weird underscore thing or cross through a circle. And I was just not about that. And I didn't really want to use my name. Yeah. Uh, so I just kind of settled on local nomad and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. So. Yeah. It's a badass name. And uh, thanks man. It- you know, it's, this is a compliment, but it was, it was misleading to me. I, I had, for some reason in my head, you know, Grant's like, we're getting this guy local nomad on. I'd never heard of you. And this, like we always talk about on here, th- this is a way for Grant and I to just find new music and get closer to music. So, you know, I'd never heard of local nomads. So in my head coming in before I hit play, I was thinking this is going to be a folk artist. And then just was completely uh, flipped on my head. So it was a great surprise. I loved it. Um, oh, sweet. And I, you know, I love your sound. Um, and you know, I, I read on your website, you know, you, you're, uh, you're, you say you're like a mixture of Paul Simon and Gnarls Barkley. And, um, that is a, uh, hell of a comparison. What, what kind are those two of your biggest influences or just what you think you sound like? Uh, I mean, somebody just said that to me 
somebody that I was in a writing session with uh, it's in a, another band, like kind of threw that comment at me. So, and some other people have said the Gnarls Barkley thing, just because of the love is gone song has a very like um, roots music, soul, like blood, sweat and tears vibe. And I feel like it's very similar to like, a song like crazy by, by Gnarls Barkley. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, my sound, I mean, what I, what I kind of do with my music is I do write folk songs at the core of my music. Um, and I love, you know, all sorts of different rock music and stuff. Like I really like Spoon. I really like Grizzly Bear, I like Elliot Smith. Tears for Fears is one of my favorite bands. And for me, I kind of uh, came to the conclusion after years of doing this, it's like, one of my favorite artists is Beck just because mm -hmm. he's done so many cool things and he, he's like alternative pop rock, you know, but his music is all over the place. And that's kind of like what I do and why I also like tears for fears so much. So for me, it's like what I kind of did over this time was combine pop music with like records that I like, you know, and yeah. kind of trying to write writing pop songs and giving them like a cool left of center production element. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of what I'm bringing to the table. Um, but I listen to everything, man. Like I, uh, I'm a really big fan of jazz and uh, like Brad Meldo, um, Chet Baker, Mozzie Washington, Thundercat, I like stuff like that, but I'm I'm literally all over the map, you know. Yeah, was this so, uh, you know, you said that you've been gigging for for a long time, and was this sort of your first chance to really hone in on like the sound of music that you wanted to create? Yeah, man. Well, I think it just takes a while, and I'm still trying to you know hone in on everything because it you you change, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, but definitely because I think it's uh it's challenging to work without a band because it's just me and, and I work uh, with the producer back home and I, I'm actually working with Corey now, um, working on some songs with him and you guys know human resources. I don't think I do. Uh, or Charleston band. I was just working with a drummer from that band. Um, so basically like, yeah, it took me a while to find my sound and, um, I, I don't know if, you know, I'm always trying to find it. You know, I don't really know how to answer that question, but I'm always changing. So I kind of just go with what I'm feeling and, and what I'm listening to at the moment and what influences me, you know? Yeah. So was this with Local Nomad, did you, did you have some of these ideas, you know, with the EP that you released last year, did you have some of these ideas for a long time or did you just say, I'm coming in the studio and I'm going to just, create new songs just from you know thin air basically both man um you know i had a well i had songs for a long time and i finished those songs in 2018 but uh i had just gotten a manager and we were trying to figure out like the best way to release them and then the pandemic hit and we kind of got really lucky with some great opportunities and you know in the streaming world and mm -hmm. um it kind of helped us grow during that time. But usually, unfor well, unfortunately, how it works is like, I'll write a lot of songs um, and then like try to figure out how to release them, which sometimes takes a while. So by the time you release music, it's like kind of old. Like those songs are, I finished those songs in 2018 mm -hmm. and didn't release them until 2020. Uh, and the process with writing that EP, as I wrote it, about 20 songs, and then I picked, you know, the best couple songs and uh, then kind of went from there. And uh, a lot of the times when I'm writing songs, I will come in uh, this time around. I did it from more of like a satirical point of view. Like I have a song called Getting Old as a Bitch. Yeah. Um, and uh, I have a song called Summertime, which I talk about my Little League baseball team. And I guess, you know, in my life, I've kind of come to this point where I've learned how to embrace my sense of humor, where I 
in the past, I felt kind of weird about that. I was like, no, I need to be this real ass dude. I need to be serious. And now it's like, I find that being honest with who I am and, and putting that into my music is way more cool Yeah, because it, because it's real and uh, being real is cool. So, you know, that's where I'm coming from. Yeah. I loved your lyrics. I mean, there's so many times where I was listening and I was like, hold on, is that what he just said? And I had to go like, like I, I was listening to the, the, what is it? Karen, just Karen. And I was like, hold on, this song is what everyone thinks it's about. It's about people being Karens in these, yeah. in these trying times. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, I, I love your music, man. It's uh, getting old as a bitch is so chill. And um, you know, my dad always says getting old is not for sissies. So, um, you know, it was just, that should be my, that should be my next song. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, that must, you know, you brought up summertime and, uh, one thing I wrote my notes on that was, uh, you know, you have a great, uh, great swing in the music video. Um, Grant's our local music video expert. Um, so I guess we'd go ahead and get into some of your music videos at this point, because they're all sure. fantastic. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, really, the, the, the Summertime was the one song we featured. And what's funny is you're in the back of that, you know, the first, for people who don't know, you know, the first time we kind of met you, uh, we were recording with uh, with your sister's band, Babe Club, and you were in the back of the car. And, you know, they go, yeah, yeah this is, a, this is my true. brother. Lo this is my brother, local. He's, he's got a cool band. It's called Local Nomad. You should check it out. And so we're like, all right. And then I had already, we have a prospect list uh, on Spotify for like who we feature on our, on our page. And um, I had right. already put you down, you know, um, as a, as a guy who as, as a song for it. Cause I'd heard that Spotify, Spotify had, you know, brought me summertime. Uh, but I love the music video. I think exactly, you know, the people who, you know, create, you know, a music video they want to give like another you know visual representation of their of their song and and how they do it and, and i love the way you you put that together with you know the quick cuts and being able to see so are all those characters real is is jimmy really a dick like what uh, who who is but like what? <laughs> kevin yeah i mean yeah that's the thing like when i um i wanted to write a baseball song because it was like a challenge for me because i was like this is kind of stupid but that's kind of my thing now is like challenging myself to be as uncomfortable as I can and write a song about it. Um, and like that, all those people are real. And I just think that, um, like I said before, bringing a sense of humor into what I do, I think at this point is important. Um, it's because it's who I am. Like, I'm just kind of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's really funny because when I was writing that song and I was, I was like, Oh shit, can I say this? Should I say this? And it felt uncomfortable. So I said, yes, I can. So yeah. that means I'm doing something right. You know, cause like being comfortable is the worst thing that you can do. Uh, sure. If you're too comfortable in life or you're too comfortable in making art, I feel like you're doing it wrong. Yeah. Um, and that's just what I've learned over time. And uh, with this song, yeah. So all the people are real and they actually like, you know, it's really funny. I haven't seen them in years, but to me, the whole thing about baseball is hilarious because I don't know, you know, how you guys grew up, but like little league was so, can I curse on this? Is that a thing? Oh yeah. yeah. yeah uh, it's like so fucking serious. Little league was like so serious <laughs> growing up to the point where like parents would fight sometimes. And like, it would just be like, what, this is a game for children. <laughs> And so, like, I kind of put that aspect into it, and the song just encompasses, like, you know, if only life were as simple as, like, going back then to play baseball, because we have all this other shit in life that we're concerned about, and, you know, parents got serious about, you know, who's playing or who's not, and this one did drugs, this one went away, this one died, this one had cancer, and, you know, two of the, Kevin actually hit me up. The day that the song came out, he goes, let's settle this right now. Do you actually think I'm a dick? Of course I said no, because I don't care. But I don't know how he is now, but you know, he definitely was a dick and probably still is. But not for the, not for the normal reason that someone is a dick. You know, he's probably a nice guy, but some people are just 
douchey people. And it's yeah. not that they're actually a dick, but like, let's be real. Like some people are just douchey people and yeah. it doesn't mean they're bad people, but, and it's just the song. Like I didn't say his last name, you know, yeah. and another fucking, um, another kid's girlfriend was like, I can't believe you'd say that about my boyfriend. And I was like, I really like your boyfriend and his family. Like, they're really nice people. And it's a song. Like, it's not like I said, you know, so and so who lives at this address. Yeah. Um, we don't know and, who these people are. I mean, like, we yeah. Just, uh, oh, man. Yeah, you guys don't know. You don't even know what they look like. So who cares? Yeah, it's they a were all you. Movie, you know? <laughs> they were all you in the music video. So, yeah. Um, so they probably got mad at that because. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. i don't know man because it's like like i don't i don't care no more you know? yeah how uh how did you come up with the video i mean like the obviously the concept of the video is probably already ingrained from the song but like just the actual production and kind of the nuts and bolts um that's something that we always you know want to want to know about and kind of hear, hear the behind the scenes well what i really do now is like i try to because we grew up in an era where music videos were so important to us. For you know? sure. like, I used to come home, you know, Fridays or, you know, and watch TRL or like Fuse. Um, yeah. And for me, like, you know, there's a music video by All American Rejects. That's like, I was like, this is a cool vibe. So I kind of wanted to go with that. And because of the pandemic and everything that was going on, it's like, I'm always a fan of really simple music videos that like tell a story. And if I can, you know, convey that, then it's like mission accomplished. And because it was just me, that was like a route that I wanted to go down and kind of explore, you know, telling the story about my baseball team, but just me. Yeah. Um, and I think like, because, um, you know, a lot of the songs I write, now are more narrative uh they kind of lend itself to that and they're easier to to make um so it's much easier to like craft a music video around something that you know already has a story built in because you're not dealing with some like ethereal thing it's kind of like meat and potatoes yeah. so it was just kind of like i saw that all american rejects music video and i was like this is really cool uh i don't even remember the the video on the top of my head um i want to say move but along, he has like a, he move along ex yeah. exactly he goes around you know so that's kind of like where i try to do and like i'm not even ashamed to say that because like anybody who writes songs or makes movies is always chasing something or an inspiration and i used to like you know say to myself oh like i can't do that this person did it but it's just like it's not going to be the same you know um, yeah. So that's kind of where I come from now with songwriting and everything. It's just like, it's just, yeah, I try to do that and did something else, you know? Yeah. So. Well, speaking of kind of the story and the narrative, I mean, like uh, the one thing with, I was watching the snake child video and I'm sitting there, I'm like, what the fuck happened to this guy's nose? And it, you just had that nose strip on. I don't know why that like was my like focus, but like, I was like, dude, what is going on? And then like, obviously the video is just like, you know, wildly, um, you know, chaotic with, you know, all the black and white and all the, you know, everything going on. And, and, you know, you know, everyone's doing, it seems like there's a, a drug narrative. I, you know, I don't, I, you know, would, tell me a little bit more about that and, and the inspiration and everything behind that. Well, one. that's actually, um, that song is about my friend, Snake Child. His name is Snake Child. And like everything in that song is like a true story. Wow. I live, I live a weird life. Um, tell us more about Snake Child. <laughs> <laughs> yeah his name is snake child that's it's uh his name is adam he's a producer and he's like the craziest dude i know like sometimes i question like how is this dude still alive i probably shouldn't be saying this on you know he probably won't even see it but we're still we're still friends and uh yeah he actually um yeah so basically like i used to go to new jersey and work on records with him and uh i would just like sleep on his floor floor and and we work on music and he's just he had a time period where he was just like crazy addicted to drugs and i won't go too much into that but like I, we just had some crazy experiences and like you know um so in this in the story in the bridge i talk about um he used to dj the playboy club in new york 
And uh, wow. one time he was dancing with uh, Cardi B. Cardi B came and he blacked out and, and someone had to drive him home because he didn't know where he was. And he got back to New Jersey and woke up the next day and people like sent him all these videos of him hanging out with Cardi B and Future. And uh, so that's kind of why like, so because the song is called Snake Child, I changed the name to Nicki Minaj because it paid off to Anaconda line. So yeah. basically the music video is just like me having a night with Snake Child. We never got into like a fight or anything like that, but like we've just like been through some crazy shit. And like for a while, like I, I don't like, I don't do drugs, you know, like I, I just drink and I just chill. But like, you know, I have some friends and Snake Child is one of them that like, again, like he's like Mick Jagger, you know, like he's just like one of those guys who yeah. can fall off a roof and then fly away and somehow grow wings. So, and I've known, and he's like literally the Elvis of New Jersey because I meet people down here that are in bands. My friend Anil, he's from Jersey. He's like, dude, I know Snake Child and he knows the story of Snake Child. Everybody in New Jersey knows. So like, it's like such a deep thing. So some people are like, what is Snake Child? But he's an actual person and yeah, so holy shit Dude, that, that is that is why we do this podcast is for yeah that right there i mean <laughs> who would have thought no i mean, I'd have never guessed that and yeah, great we, song great video yeah thanks dude. all sure. around how did you pull off uh getting everyone was it the it's the karen video where it's like supposed to be a documentary is that am i remembering that right yeah yeah so those are just my friends i mean i used to tour with taking back sunday and I'm friends with John Nolan and my sister used to be in Susto and, yeah. um, you know, Justin helped me out and, you know, that just kind of came together, but really, uh, you know, a bunch of my friends do video stuff and I just kind of wrote that song with the idea of doing that video because I was like, this is hilarious. And, uh, I kind of just went full, um, spinal tap on it, you know? Yeah. And uh, we just rented a peer space, which is like, I don't know if you guys know what a peer space is, but it's basically like you can rent out a roof or like a photo studio for like an hourly rate. And yeah. we rented this roof out. And, uh, you know, it's like all these videos I just kind of do on the fly with my friends. And like, they're all on like a budget of like 300 bucks. So... Um, I'm just really fortunate to have grown up with so many talented people in New York. They're like really involved in film and and they just did a mass class thing. They did. One. Okay, so before we broke up, you said you were fortunate to grow up with a lot of talented people, and that's where I think we were. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm fortunate enough to grow up with, like, in a cool music scene in Long Island, like, rest in peace now. That's kind of why I came out of Charleston, just because New York is kind of shot in general. But I'm really lucky to have grown up with – and grown up and grown – with all my friends who are artists who do film or photographers and uh it just kind of you naturally developed uh over time like all my friends kind of we all grew together like i do music my friend does film yeah my friends do photography and like it was just like a a nice little scene and we all helped each other out and, you know there, there's not too much of a music scene in New York. Like there is, but there isn't like every, cause everything is kind of online now where I feel like down here, there's more of a community between, you know, live music and, and people here, mostly because everything's closer, everything's more affordable mm -hmm. and it's just a different community down here, you know? Yeah. That's one but, thing that we've, uh, we found, you know, really digging in. Cause like, you know, I'm friends with Danny Martin, who's in Two Slices, um, who's a band from down there. And, and we kind of got connected to Crab Claw to then, you know, to you, to Babe Club and your sister's band. And 
you know, really getting to know the whole Charleston community and Keon, who we just released today, uh, his, his podcast with Brave Baby. And, um, you know, so there's a, a ton of uh, a ton of people together down there. That's it's a really an awesome community. So I'm glad to see that you're you're, you're infusing that as well. It's more alive than the uh, than the almost more alive than the New York scene. Um, it's not that; it's just different, man. Yeah. It's just yeah. like there's still community, but you gotta understand, like New York is a, is a place where a lot of stuff happens, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, it's oversaturated. Yeah. You know, so it's like down here, you're a bigger fish in a small pond. Yeah. In New York you're a smaller fish in a big pond because there's on, you know, pre COVID 200 shows going on in one night. Yeah. And you're competing with artists that are huge, you know, like people, you have like a terminal five or like Madison square garden, you know? Um, and then you have like a, like hundreds of tiny venues and stuff and then mid-sized bands so it's like in New York, you kind of have to be more careful about if you're from there, it's expensive. And you're like, how many times are we going to play New York a year? Twice a year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we're doing a headlining show. So it's a much different type of situation. And uh, here people just go out because that's what they do here. Like people go out in New York, but they're not necessarily like, oh, let's like check out this show because it's, you know, three miles away. Mm -hmm. you know um so that's kind of the difference i feel like the local scene here was what it was like in new york or like long island when i started playing music you know in like 2008 2007 mm -hmm. that's cool uh because things were there was just a music scene like there were tons of bands i'm also 31 now so like every you know everyone my age is like having kids and stuff so it's also different for me um yeah. But yeah, so I dig it down here though. It's cool. Yeah, it's interesting that, you know, a lot of people are starting to kind of move down and get to that, you know, getting kind of moving south a little bit. Um, you know, we've seen it here. There's more, um, I think there's more people coming from the north, you know, coming down to Florida and Georgia just because it's, you know, it's, if you can work from home anywhere, you know, you might as well, you know, cut your living costs Definitely. in half. Um, but yeah, very excited, you know, to get, you know, I think, Tash and I need to take a trip to Charleston and, and hit up Royal American and, you know, uh, lo-fi and, and all those places that, you know, we keep seeing pop up on our newsfeed, uh, you know, over and over again on, on Instagram, as far as like just hosting shows and doing shows. Um, you know, any, yeah. plan, you know, any plans for you as far as like touring goes, and then we'll, we'll kind of run into Pete Peterson's party pack of questions after, after you talk about touring. Um, but. Not, not right now, man. I'm just putting out probably a bunch of like, in the fall, I'm going to do a couple shows around here. Mm -hmm. Like I've been here for a month now, so I'm trying to build a band and I got a couple people down here that I'm going to be playing with. Um, but more like regional stuff in late summer and fall. Um, and I'm releasing, I'm actually coming out with another EP um, in August, I think right now. Nice. So Hell yes. There you go. Well, we yeah, no, no. I mean, as it's kind of tricky because it's like shows are coming back, but it's just like being smart about it right now, mm -hmm. you know. That's what we've, we've talked with a lot of people that are like, you know, it's the flood too. So it's not just like normal where like everything's staggered, where you can kind of like you could slip into a better venue than like you could now because you're it's coming from the top down. I mean, like every big exactly. band in the world is going on tour this year like that is exactly so that's kind of my thing it's like it's it's just a different thing right now because it's like okay like because at this point like okay like i could do diy touring and hire people but i've been doing it like building myself online and you know until like i'm able to really like you know sustain that realistically and like be able to do touring in a way that's, um, you know, beneficial to building my, you know, my music. Uh, it, it's just hard to be like, yeah, I'm just going to do a whole bunch of like really, you know, 
weird shows right now when things are still trying to come back together. So I kind of just made the decision, like, I'm just going to figure out some like regional stuff right now. Yeah. And then, you know, do the online stuff because as you said, like, it's so true. Like the bigger bands are just coming out of the woodworks, like all tours in the fall. And like, it's just, uh, it's an interesting situation. I'm definitely glad that live music is back. Though. Yeah. yeah. So you seem to have the right mindset about it. And, you know, it's like Dewey Finn said on School of Rock, the one thing people always forget about, it's about the music, man. It's about the music. So. Jesus. <laughs> it's about the music. And it's also about being like, hey, man, like, I'm just one dude. And like, do I want to drain all my resources doing a tour that 10 people show up to right now? You know? Yeah. It's like, it's not ideal. So it's like, I'm just trying to, be smarter because I'm also 31 right now and it's like I've done so much touring whether it, you know it'd be like the House of Blues situation or like Terminal 5 or like Bowery Electric and you know uh, House of Blues in New Orleans and stuff like that like I play like tons of different venues and um, it's kind of just being smart about it now especially as an independent artist where you can't you have to do everything yourself so it's like what am I seeing the most growth and doing right now? It's like mm -hmm. shows will come, but when the timing is right to, to do well, touring, mm -hmm. you know, touring will come for, for me. But yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, we, uh, we hope to, we hope that your regional circuit will, uh, will extend up, you know, up 75 to, uh, to Atlanta. Uh, we, you know, you got, you okay. got four people who would maybe be able to come in the fall because Tash is having a kid Sweet, and dude. me and then his wife would come probably. So you guys, okay. I didn't know where you guys are from. You guys are from Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we got, there's, and there's plenty, okay, of, I think, awesome. you know, there's plenty of rooms in here that um, for sure that, you know, I think there's a big Charleston, there's a big Charleston crowd. You know, a lot of people went to college in Charleston and then, you know, um, you know, a lot of people who will live there and then come back to Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um so there's a there's a good there's a good there's a good crowd of you know that that group here um but with that you know want to hop right in here to pete peterson's party pack of questions uh these are going to be rapid okay. fire so um you know we should be should be pretty easy though um we'll kick us off here cake or pie uh i'd have to say pie all right, sunrise or sunset? Uh, I'd say sunset. Love at first sight. Is it real or not? Definitely not. Definitely not. No. Would you rather have a night in or a night out? Uh, I'd say a night out. Night out. All right. Dogs or cats? Uh, dogs. Okay. Would you rather be a ninja or a pirate? Uh, I'd say a pirate. Pirate. Hey, he's down the coast. You mean gotta be gotta embrace the uh, embrace the coastal air there. It's just, just easier, man. It's just easier <laughs> pirate. Life. Yeah. All right. How about uh, is Bigfoot real? No. Are aliens real? Uh. Yeah, but not like, I don't think we, not like we imagine them to be. I think they're like particles that we can't see and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Got that Tic Tac bullshit going on right now. Yeah, we, 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 we don't know if those are real or not. All right. Red wine or yeah. white wine? Uh, red. Vintage or new? Vintage. Would you rather party all night or day drink? Uh... I'd say party all night. Yeah, the New, New York lifestyle. I've been there one time. It was it was a, definitely a party all night kind of place. Uh, candy corn or yeah, candy I, I pumpkins? What'd you say? Uh, can't, I don't know. Candy corn. Kroger or Publix? Publix. All right, are you more likely to do the robot or the worm at a party? Uh, the worm. Tenders or wings? Wings, baby. All right. With those wings, you have ranch or blue cheese? Uh, blue cheese. All right. 
Pants or shorts? Pants, man. All right. Donuts or toaster strudels? Donuts. Donuts. All right. This one's controversial. This one divides a lot of the Indie Rock community. Um, Chips or pretzels? Chips. All right. We got another. It doesn't sound like you're anti-pretzel, which a lot of times is what we find. Uh, A lot of people don't like pretzels. No, man. I mean, I like both. Yeah. All right, that's yeah. good. That's good. We got some some guy. Yeah, some people out here are not 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 big fans of pretzels. All right, and finally, bands we might not know um, that we should know. Um, you know, we do have we we had interviewed somebody from New York. They did talk about uh, man dancing and uh, a few other uh, New Jersey bands. I don't know if you know them or not, but um, so tell us some some people that up in Jersey, up you know around Charleston that we we, we should be checking out. Uh. So Jersey, the Jack Moves. Uh, there they were on Jack Johnson's label or Ben Harper's label. Really cool, like soul, '60s retro feel vibe uh, band. Uh, L Rain uh, from Brooklyn. Um. She's a really cool, I'd say it's very similar to like Bjork. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'd say my sister showed me this one band, Cry Baby, which I think is, is pretty cool. They have like this, um, this like late 90s, early 2000s song, or early 2000s sound. It's like sounds like Britney Spears production or like in sync, but it's also like indie. It's like really interesting and the songs are cool. And they're from here. I think I just met some of them the other night. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Um, All right, cool. We got the Jack moves L rain, which is, I wrote down E L L E R A I N. Is that right? Or is it spelled so it's So it's L. It's okay. L apostrophe rain. Rain. Um, super out there. Right. Yeah, it's cool though. Very tight, very tight. Well, again, p- appreciate you answering the Pete Peterson party pack right there. Uh, I know it's some, some odd questions, sure. but, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we just have a little fun at the end of the, uh, end of the interview, wrap it up nice and neat uh, with a good bow on it, man. Cool. Uh, yeah, well, Michael, thank you. Uh, awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. And uh, we look forward to hopefully seeing you live uh, soon and looking forward to your new EP in August. Uh, yeah. For those of you listening, go out, local nomad, find them everywhere that music can be found. Um, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you guys for having me. Of course. Appreciate man. it. Take care, man. Take care.